What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, B-Hot Radio. Shout in, as always. I got my podcast partner off in this thing. The original hot boy himself, Turk. Whoa, what up, what's happening, what's happening? Y'all already know, man. Getting ready for that November 2nd. You heard me? My oh, God, hey. it's about to go crazy yeah, in that thing, yeah. man. But I mean, Turk, stepping in the building. Yeah. I got a friend and family member to the show. A A-Town legend and yeah. icon. My dog, Scotty ATL. What the hell? Hey, hey, dude, what's up, man? Man, feeling good, feeling great. Okay, Scotty, okay. first of all, man. That let me boy blaming. That boy blaming over there. Man, so nice. He's going to get it on. Yeah, he can hit them jumps up. Oh, 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 come on, man. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Scotty, how you been doing, man? man how doing... you been doing, Scotty? You know, you tried to stress us all out, bro. Well, I wasn't trying to stress y'all well, out. You did. I so did. did. I was just living my life. You know what I'm saying? And um, I got into a car accident. Yeah. May 5th. Actually, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, yeah. A couple of weeks after I opened a new store on Edgewood Edge in Atlanta, Grizz exactly. by Scotty. Um, I got to a bad car accident, man. I almost lost my life, man. Damn. Take yeah. us back. Take us back that day. Like, how did it all start? Like, how did your day start on Cinco de Mayo? Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause that's a day where you, you really having a lot of fun. And also, right. I gotta ask: Did you have any foreshadowing going yeah. into it? Man, did you I did. Feel? I'm gonna tell you what's crazy. So, I really don't like Cinco de Mayo. I don't mm. celebrate it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't never. I'm not a Taco Tuesday type nigga. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like Cinco de Mayo came up, and I remember seeing um something or uh, something happened around the school. Yeah, cause Cinco de Mayo got Cinco de Mayo got like something to do like when they have a advertisement they they put a skull up or some something was like that. Or we was throwing a party at the shop. The tequila skull or something like something that. Something like yeah. that. Or yeah. we was doing a party at the shop and I think they was gonna do a flyer and the flyer yeah. had a skull and I was like, no, let's not do that. Yeah, cause skull to me represent death. death. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I didn't do that, but it was like. A foreshadowing moment for me. Yeah. Went to the shop. We had a party there at the shop. We had a day party. It was cool. Yeah. Everybody kicking it, having fun, having shots. Mm -hmm. I wasn't driving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My girl was actually driving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we ride in the car after leaving the shop. Everything was straight. Went to get something to eat. Stopped at my homegirl spot, got something to eat, and was on the way home uh, to change and go to a party. Yeah. And then on the way home, we caught a flat tire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She driving, we pulled out on the side of the road. And um, shit, man, at, the first thing that happened was I jumped out to change the tire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're on the side of the road, man. And I'm not no mechanic, you yeah. know what I mean? But I jumped, I got the jack in the trunk. Yeah, all you prepared. I'm changing the tire. And out of nowhere, a tow truck pull up. Mm hmm. Mm. I ain't caught no tow truck though. Yeah. Feel me? So I'm changing the tire and got some of the lures loose. Buddy pull up and he like, man, I, I help you take your tire off. Just throw me like 50 bucks. Yeah. I'm like, shit, bro, I done got half of them motherfuckers exactly. out. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? To do a tire. I hear 50 for the tire. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you God know. Damn. Does a new tire come with this, brother? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nah, he just, you know, he want to help me take it off. He so. was hustling. Come so on. I said, man, I'll give you 25, man. You know, help me out real quick. Yeah. So, boom, he jumped in the mix. But he parked in a way where, you know, I guess he may have thought he wasn't going to be there that long either. Uh, I had my flashes on. Yeah. But he parked behind me. Yeah. So we changing the tire, man. This shit took maybe like 10, 15 minutes and we couldn't get it off. Uh, we got all the lug, not, lug, lug nuts off but one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seemed like it was stripped. So he uh, steps away and was like, I'm going to call my boss. I might have to tow you. So I'm like, man, why you need to call your boss for? You know, like yeah. you a tow truck company. You yeah. might well just tow me if you're going to tow me, you know. Um, he stepped away and walked towards... Like the highway, we're yeah. inside the highway. We yeah. ain't on the street level. Uh, feel me? We're on the highway. Yeah. Damn. So when he walked on the side of the highway, my girl was in the car, and I'm just standing on the side by myself. She went in. She need to use the bathroom. Yeah. I'm standing in between. Like if this my car, this the tow truck. I'm standing in between the two vehicles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's standing in front of me, right outside of both vehicles, but we face to face talking about her needing to use the bathroom. Yeah, man. In a split second, you couldn't you couldn't prepare for this shit at all, you know, because it yeah. just came out of nowhere. Yeah, 
a nigga just, and I heard the first, wow, a drunk driver ran into the back of the tow truck. Yeah. Uh, on the side? On the side of the highway. Damn. Damn. So, Money. Man, so, so listen, <laughs> you don't have time. This shit happening so fast. Yeah. You don't got time to jump out the way. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, this is like, blah, blah, like, yeah. you know. And, um, man, that shit ran my, hit my leg, smashed my leg. I never forget, smashed my leg. And um, I just lost sight of her. I fell, and the tow truck kept rolling over me. Damn. So I remember being underneath the truck, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But... I roll from under the truck. This shit happened so fast, yeah. dog, that it feels like a movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I roll from up under the tow truck and I end up on the other side. Like, let's say um if the car facing this way, I land on this side. Later, she I start screaming her name for her to wake up. And when she came around, she ended up on this side. Damn, mm. so she was she was fucked up too. She got here too. Broke her uh her heel. And uh, her knee a little bit. Damn. Uh, he was going real fast. He was going real fast. Yeah. So, boom, I wake up. And, uh, well, I didn't wake up. I never was oh, knocked so out. Yeah. yeah. Feel me? When I when I rolled over, I know, all I knew was I was screaming, like, I can't feel my leg. I can't feel my leg. It's disconnected. Damn. Man, I'm looking in the sky. Real tall. I'm looking in the sky, praying to God. Cause I'm and like, this bad. shit hurts so bad that I feel like I'm about to die. Oh my God. I'm praying, man. I pray, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But bro, I'm looking in the sky, <laughs> like, bro. I'm like, coming to you. Oh right my now. God, bro. This joint hurt so bad, man. Um, so first she came and she got to me and she thought I was okay mm -hmm. because you couldn't see nothing. Now yeah. you get smashed at the how fast this was going, you would think that we'll be towed up. Yeah. Right? Brain, blood hanging, yeah. you know, all that. None of that was happening. Yeah. She thought I was good. I had on these thick jeans. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I I was telling her, like, man, my leg disconnected. And um damn. out of nowhere, man, this this how I know with God though. Yeah. Out of nowhere, a lady came and just Helped us out. Yeah. She called. I'm screaming to the nigga, the tow truck nigga. Yeah. Hey, call the ambulance. Help us out. He startled. He on the phone. He ain't do nothing. So the, so a lady comes. Later, I found out that she was a paramedic for Grady. Yeah. She just happened to see the whole accident. Mm. She lived on the same exit that we got in the accident. At. Yeah. Was getting off, pulled over. Jumped out, called the ambulance and the police and the fire department came. That's right. She called them for us and stayed there with us until they came. Yeah. yeah. Was talking to me and shit. And um, I'm just trying to stay awake because I got a video of this shit. She took a video for me. But, man, I'm trying to stay awake because I thought if I closed my eyes, was I was going to die. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. came on the scene, man, they cut my pants leg open. And when they cut my pants leg open, my whole leg just fell apart. God damn. My bone was sticking out of my leg. Ooh. And my foot was on the ground. Like, let's say my leg laying like this. My foot was laying on the ground like a cartoon. Oh, feel me? And you hurting like a motherfucker. I'm hurting, but I'm still talking to people. Cause I don't want to die. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Feel me. Um, by the time later we found out, I lost four pints of blood on the scene, and they say if you lose like four or five pints of blood, you could die. You damn right. Yeah. Damn. And so, um, shit, man. They gave. Me, they did give me some morphine on the scene. Yeah. So much was going on by the time the ambulance came, paramedics. I'm talking to them. Um, they gave me a shot and rushed me on to the ambulance, and it just was like a, a blur, you know what I'm saying? It happened, I guess the whole thing took maybe 30, 40 minutes for them to get there and you know, get me situated and get me on out. But yeah. it felt so fast because of adrenaline pumping and shit. Mm -hmm. So I get, to the, I get to the hospital, shit crazy, because that wasn't it. A lot of people saw the accident 
and thought that it ended. Oh man, you did good. I'm glad you made it. Yeah, yeah but so the, I, it was just getting started. Man, I got to the hospital, and um, the the dude that hit us, he could have died too, because he hit the back of the tow truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that thing goes straight through that roof. Yeah, right. Yeah. So he ended up being a couple rooms down from us in the same hospital. Yeah. They admitted me in the um, ICU uh, at that time and found out he lo he's losing blood. Mm -hmm. So they had a so blood had to transfusion. They had, well, my girl was straight. They let her, they took her out, you know, because her stuff was just broken. So they mm -hmm. wrapped her up. They that nigga ain't just up. broken. <laughs> like that's, well, it wasn't <laughs> blood. It wasn't blood, but yeah. she still was hurt. She yeah. couldn't walk too. You know what I'm saying? And then um, they got me in there, man. So I'm laid up in the bed. I found out my wrist was broken later Damn. on that week. I'm talking to them like, man, my wrist hurt. They're like, you okay? I'm like, nah, my wrist hurt, man. So they x-rayed it, found out the wrist was broke. I ended up finding out in the hospital I had um, a traumatic hernia, what it's called. So this shit popped out of my stomach like four times. Mm -hmm. You know, at first they thought I was joking on that or just talking. Okay. Wait, see, how you how you go a whole week and find out that you got more broken bones? Like, well, they doing find it like out, that? I got. Well, now I Grady came in on save Sunday. lives now, but no, I wasn't at Grady. Oh, it didn't that much. I wasn't at Grady. I was at Wellstar actually. Okay. Yeah. Because my grandma had a similar accident to you. She had her leg uh, the same thing. Yeah. But she just turned 91 the other day. Man. They put that leg back together, put a rod in that thing. She broken ribs, broken arm, broken everything. And uh, she survived it. That wow. great. Yeah. That, that trauma okay. seems to be I, a I, I hear they do real But I'm just trying to see how a week go by. It was Wednesday, excuse me. And, 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 and they didn't know you had other complications going on. So... Like, so when they first got me in, it's because I say the same thing. But as I'm going through this, I'm learning that doctors are people. Yeah. And Feel you got to be a self-advocate, too. You gotta got to advocate for yourself regardless of what the hell's going on. Right. So it took, when I first got there, man, my leg was shattered. Mm -hmm. It was When they showed me the x-ray, from the knee on down to the ankle, my leg was maybe broke. It, on the picture, it looked like it was maybe 30 times. God damn. I'm, my my bone looked like icicles, chiclets. Uh, my God. Feel me? So the first thing they did was they put these rods in your leg. Yeah. To stabilize it. Yeah. Feel me? One Money at the together. bottom. Yeah. One at the top. That's what I had first. Yeah. That was my first surgery I had. I had seven surgeries now. So that was the first one. Then by Wednesday, Thursday, that's when they found out that I wasn't telling I wasn't lying about the wrist. So yeah. they thought you were lying? Well, they 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 must have thought you were trying to get some more of that morphine or some shit. Nah, man. Well, they do gotta be careful about that. But it's so much emphasis on the leg. Yeah. You know that it's like we focus on this right now. Yeah. We hear you. You know. Yeah. And then they dealing with so many patients. Yeah. Everybody complaining about shit going on. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. You feel me? So it took me to go and get an X-ray maybe one or two times before they said, okay, now nah, it's broke. Yeah. So they wrap that up. Man, that seems like that'll be like some 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 um malpractice um lawsuits like shit. Don't they get some man. shit like that too? I I look, man, I didn't thought about all Cause this. Cause I'm just shit. saying, like, you know we're gonna saying? know when Scotty pulls back up here in this phantom how everything turned mm, out. It's okay? crazy, man. That, but that 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 that's crazy how you know what I'm saying he got to go that long, bro, and then for them to think. He lying. Like, why yeah. you going through all this, yeah. man? Like, what's running through your mind, you know, after, you know, you, you done came through all that and you got to go through all these surgeries now? Because I know you probably were like, damn, I'm a did you ever think you're going to lose your leg? Well, a couple things. The, the first week, I thought I was going to still die because I had five blood tra transfusions after I got in that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And God. so... Mind you, I ain't never had no blood transfusion or no surgery. Yeah. So I had two surgeries within that first week. They say, we got to give you a blood transfusion. I'm like, damn, what if this shit don't work? Yeah. We do the blood transfusion, and they come back and say, hey, we got to give you another one because it didn't hold. Mm -hmm. It didn't stay. So I had to do that five times yeah. in the first week before I was even stable by Saturday. Yeah. That's when I was out the clear of... 
okay, I think I'm going to live. Okay. Feel me? Okay. So that first week, people calling, texting. I'm still just thinking about my life. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I can't even hit nobody back because I don't even know if I'm going to make if it. If you're right going to be able to hit anybody back. And it, it's crazy right. like how you could be thinking that from a leg injury, bro. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you say you have lost so much blood. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, man. And then that following week, you know, they rush you into like trying to do rehabbing and, you know, they because they don't want you just sitting in bed too. Not doing nothing because you can get blood clots, Ooh. different things like that. Yeah. So I think I was in there for maybe two and a half weeks the first time I went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and I, in terms of my leg, my dad has two amputated legs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the thought of me losing my, dad, my leg did go through my mind because I'm thinking, I'm around somebody that's close like to that. me who yeah. don't got both of their legs. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm like, damn, this shit is crazy. Yeah. You know, when I look back at it now, I, it's really a miracle that they was able to save my leg as much as I had gone through, you know, with the bone coming out. So many complications, man, can happen to you and then you get infections and all these different things for them to even just be able to save my leg. It was a miracle. So how did you avoid like staying away from the after effect, like getting the infection? Or did you get one of those as you went on? Yeah, I got I ended up getting two infections in my leg mm -hmm. later. Um going going back and forth to the doctor after that. Gotta go to the doctor maybe twice a week, you know, checking on them, doing meds, doing all these different things. Then I caught infection the first time Sitting at home, man, I ran a fever. Legs swole up. I'm like, damn, this shit crazy. I can barely move my knee. This maybe like a month after yeah. I've been going through all this. I'm like, damn, this shit hurt like a motherfucker. So I remember maybe two days in, three days, I got a fever. Mm -hmm. My legs starting to hurt. Um, my temperature's, you know, running high. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, damn, I need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Went to the hospital, man, and just to check on it and they say we got to keep you here they put a q-tip in you where the infection at and the q-tip go in the whole q-tip you know what i'm saying the whole shit go in your leg because the Ain't infection then rolled right it out now. yeah inflammation and plus my when when your bone go through your leg a lot of people don't know this but it breaks your, your nerves you got to rebuild that you got to yeah. rebuild your muscle the skin all man, that man. you know so they pushed this thing through my leg. It just hit the bone. Oh, Q-tip. So I mean, this motherfucker like, damn, bro, I got sitting in here again. Could you feel that shit? Yeah, you can feel it. I mean, he ain't that big, man. So he feeling it. <laughs> yeah, I you can feel that. Saying? Like, that's what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm watching. Like, I'm actually a fan of the leg. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm watching the leg <laughs> on, the, on the Instagram. Like, one situation I was man. telling you about, you know, when you, when you went and... It was this lady, man, and she just was like piddling the Pitting scab, the scab off, off it, bro. Yeah, like, man. like, God like, it's, like that, that, how, how, how did that process, you know, go, bro? Like, cause I was like, man, I know he feeling that shit. Yeah, man. But you don't seem like you feeling it. No, like, you it's like, well, you, you sit right here now. Well, there's parts of my leg that I still can't really feel. Okay. okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's numb, and some of it may grow back the nerves, and some of them. Although I still got my leg and I'll be able to walk again, I may lose feeling in some parts of the leg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when she did that, you know, part of it is more seeing it than it is feeling it. Yeah. yeah. I can see it and I'm like, damn, she peeling the scab off. It hurts. Yeah. You know, and I'm thinking at the same time in my mind, why is she doing this? Ain't got no gloves on. That's what that's what fuck me. You know up. what I'm saying? I'm thinking to myself, God damn, like, what if something happened to my leg? Yeah. Ironically, on some real nigga shit, this was before the infection. Ooh. So there's no way, you know, if we if we want to really get real about it, you know, I did research yeah. what I could do if this shit <laughs> yeah. was the cause. <laughs> and I and I asked around to some people. That's in the medical field, but you got to have some proof. Yeah, you can't I just be going in. Yeah. Nigga. I mean, you know, you can't you can't hold that to somebody to say you was the reason why I caught oh, infection. Yeah. Because when you get into further research, when your leg, when your bone is exposed to the air, 
that's really what causes things to get inside of your body. Yeah. Your act, let's say you break your skin, okay, that's yeah. one thing. But your leg, your bone being exposed to the wide open air, all kind of particles, you got to think. I rolled on the ground. My leg is open. Yeah. I'm on the side of the highway. It's dust. It's particles. It's niggas driving by this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So did, that, did this happen? Like, all right, so you, you, you go through all that. Did you get more educated, like, in the medical field, like, learning shit about, yeah. you know what I'm saying, what goes on in the medical field yeah. because of that? Man... I, I learned, so, and I'm still learning, you know, mm -hmm. I had a lot of altercations with doctors, you know, where I had to stand my ground sometimes, wow. you know, and I ain't gonna lie, a couple times I had to like fire a couple nurses, Yeah, mm. you know, I was big on my energy in that motherfucker. Facts. People coming in, not with the right attitude, I send them out, bro. <laughs> you got to go. Hey, let me talk to the, um, to the main nurse yeah. on, on, you know, the, yeah, the staff nurse float, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I did that a couple times. There was a couple of doctors when I when I had the traumatic hernia shit. The lady basically told me that, yeah, it, you know, what I was saying was a lie. And I had to go off on her ass and they come in with a team of doctors. They might come in eight deep yeah. to talk to you. You know what I mean? And you could feel somewhat intimidated by those conversations because you don't know what they're going to say. Plus, you don't want to say also, that. Also, your life is in their hands, so you don't want them to kill you. Exactly. exactly. How but about I that? Had to, a couple of times I had to stand my ground yeah. in that. You know, I had to learn about cleaning my own wounds. I had to learn about, like you said, advocating for myself. Exactly. Learn about going in and, you know, uh, teaching them how to draw blood from me because certain people stick your arm in the wrong way where it bruise you up yeah. and shit. Yeah, <laughs> you fuck you up them. too. Yeah. And it's crazy. You know, so much shit, man. It's crazy that I even feel like I'm going through this in general, bro, because I never would imagine that this would be me. Yeah. Well, in a million man. years. Just yeah. like you seen here right now today, yeah. you living your regular life. Regular life. Not you'll never think you'll be sitting here talking to a nigga about talking to a doctor exactly. or a nurse. So That's did how they, I was. Did it make you like appreciate life more you know what i'm saying after that because sometimes we have to go through like these type of situations to even get a relationship with god like what was your spirituality before this happened or uh, did it make you get closer after it happened man so i where i come from is you know i come from a single parent home my dad run the streets i ran the streets as a young nigga i ended up going to church for a time period just to just learn because I felt like the streets was going to take me out. Exactly. So I got a relationship with God during that time, that time frame. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I learned so much that I felt like I became more spiritual than religious. Mm -hmm. I know that's the shit people say I really hate it, but yeah, it's the truth. It's the you truth. know what I'm saying? So I don't go to church as much, but I believe in God. I Facts. read the word. I could tell a nigga about the Bible. Exactly. I pray with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All these different things. So going through the experience, it was like the most personal I feel like I've been to God mm. my whole life. Yeah. I, in my mind, you know, and, and I'm not boasting about it, but, you know, I felt closer to God than some people that might go to church. Yeah. You're damn right. You feel nah, me? You talking like to that. him every five minutes. Yeah. Man, bro, I'm <laughs> every five but, minutes. But, 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 on, but yeah. outside of that, I'm I'm gonna put you in the mindset, right? You wake up in the morning, you can't move. You gotta talk to him. I gotta trust you now for food. Come on. I gotta trust people. Come on. Food, water, bathing, getting money, and I'm gonna go get her. I like to get out and get my shit. Exactly. So now the prayer to God is like. Man, I really need you to come through for me this month. Exactly. Not, you know, nigga praying, we going to just go and do what we do. Yeah. Yeah. Prayer, whether the prayer was answered or not, exactly. you might not even think about exactly. that shit again. No, but it's Nigga, I got enough. all day yeah. to make sure this prayer went through. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm praying, bro, like I never had. I wake up in the morning. Some morning, bro, I wake up in the morning and just cry because I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Exactly. Simple things. Get up, go to the bathroom. Get up, give me some water. Yeah. And so then, how that make you feel, bro? Like just 
coming from being a go getter to where you have to go get somebody else to go get what you need. Man, it make you feel. It's so many emotions go through your mind, man. Like it humbles you. Yeah, definitely. Um, it makes you feel grateful. Yeah, appreciative. Um, really teach you to appreciate life mm -hmm. a lot more. You know, I'm 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 always connected to my kids, mm -hmm. but doing more things with them, like man, I started to just be like, okay, after two months sitting at the house, we got to get out TV a little bit. Mm -hmm. We got to get out the video game a little bit. What can we do? We got to get out the phone a little bit. Shit, let me teach them how to play chess. Yeah. You know, let's color. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's have some conversations. And so I started to do that. My yeah. mom will come over. My friends will come over. And it just really gave me a new appreciation for life, a gratefulness, um, understanding family. You know, there were some relationships that wasn't as good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Me and my kids' mom. Yeah. That for me, it helped me understand and click. Shit, these little things we be talking about, this shit ain't that deep. Exactly. I'm fighting for my life. Mm -hmm. We need to really evaluate what's important. You know what I'm saying? So it just helped me all, all the way around, man. You know, spiritually, mentally, emotionally to, to mature. And I think it helped me on the on the business front too. Yeah. Because it allowed me to elevate. I always would tell myself that as black people, we focus on being rich versus being wealthy. That's mm -hmm. right. You when you rich, you want to grind every day. Yeah. You got to keep making money. Facts. When you wealthy, you have time. Come mm -hmm. on. You could you could sit at home and you could play with your kids and exactly. so sometimes we can envy People, white people, whoever, nigga playing golf all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nigga, I'm out working. We champion this shit. Yeah. I'm grinding the whole time. Mm -hmm. I'm a grind all day. I'm a grind till I die. Exactly. But you look at the white man, he playing golf. He's spending time with his kids. You feel me? So it, it it changed my mindset to have to think differently. Yeah. Know? And I'm still working on that. I'm not saying I'm an expert because Sometimes I even think to myself now, like, damn, bro, like, I struggle with wanting to still work hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Instead of working on being wealthy and enjoying the time that I have, I still want to get back to work. Yeah. Facts. You know?